Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's show, the seventh episode of Transcending Work, Harnessing the Courage to Lead. And tonight we're here with an amazing talent, a singer-songwriter, Sharika Sharad. Sharika, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> it's really great to have you here. So I remember the first time I met you, it was under the staircase in Waterloo Station. And you were singing, I can't even remember the song, but I remember coming up the stairs from, from the bathroom, actually, <laughs> and hearing this amazing haunting voice. And I didn't know where it was coming from. And then I saw you on the floor and you had this radiant smile. And I remember thinking, oh my God, I need to know who this person is. Luckily, you had your name on your, on your cases. <laughs> so when did you actually start doing busking? So I actually started busking about uh, four years ago. It was four, maybe five now. And uh, I was actually working at Waitrose at the time. And I don't know, something happened to my pay where it just didn't come in. I didn't get as much as I should have. And obviously I, I was uh, renting back then. And uh, yeah, I needed to pay rent. So I just started busking on, it was actually on Embankment Bridge. Okay. Uh, and then uh, and then while I was just busking there, the person who, who runs the busking scheme outside the South Bank Center saw me and said, oh, come and audition. And then like, yeah, from there I was like, wait, I'm actually making more money doing this than <laughs> working in the supermarket and promoting my music. So since then, yeah, I'm still, I'm still here. And I said, well, not right, not this year busking, but yeah, it's helped me out loads. And when did you know you were called to music? When did you know that this was what you wanted to do? Um, for me, my call into music, it, it was a, it was a slow one. Well, it, it was a weird one for me because I think when you start young, uh, when it comes to oh, performing and stuff, you're just happy to be doing something. You're kind of like getting attention, but also when you don't know a lot about yourself, you just know that something feels right and you're kind of getting accepted, socially accepted doing it and stuff like that. So you're a bit like, oh, I'm just gonna carry on with this. And so, um, yeah, it was about when I was 15, I started being like, oh yeah, I'm really enjoying like writing songs and met with other mu musicians and was like, yeah, this is cool. So I think, yeah, it was about then, really. And and I remember seeing a picture, I've been following you since since I saw you that day, <laughs> and I remember seeing a picture of you with Seal on South Bank. <laughs> Tell us about that moment. Uh, so uh, basically, I think he found my music beforehand and uh, he was on tour and he was kind of like looking around for buskers. And then, so he knew he was gonna be in London. So he actually got in touch with the South Bank and I was at home, I wasn't having a great day, so I wasn't planning on busking. And they called me and they were like, oh, um, why aren't you out busking today? Oh, we were just wondering if you would be around because there's loads of people here. And I was like, it's a bit cheeky, like asking me, <laughs> asking me to come up, like when it's not even a gig or anything. But right. I was like, okay, cool, like whatever, like it's, maybe that's just a sign to go out there. And um, yeah, and then I was like busking for about an hour. And then uh, this like really like hench guy came and was like, oh, because my um, battery started running out. So, so I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go now. And uh, this really like hench, like a security guard looking guy was like, oh, you finishing? Because somebody wants to come and see you. And I was like, oh God, there's all these people asking me to sing. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, oh, I'll just carry on. And then I kind of like clocked onto something there and I thought, oh, maybe it's like, it's coming up to International Busking Day and like, so maybe it's like Sadiq Khan or something like that. And I was like, okay, cool. And so I kept on singing and then, yeah, he just came on, he just came up to me and he was on Facebook Live and he was like, oh, can I come and sing with you? And I was like, yeah, sure. And then he was like, what song do you want to sing? And I was like, oh, let's sing Kiss from a Rose. And he was like, oh, do you know the words? I was like, yeah, I do know the words, don't worry. <laughs> Luckily. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Luckily, I know, because to be honest, it was my friends back in school, like, uh, that was yeah. like, really into the song and I was like oh like let me hear it and learnt it so yeah <laughs> they helped me out <laughs> oh my god what did you feel like after that and what what happened after like did he uh, invite you to do more gigs or yeah so he invited me to open for a show in Greenwich and his show nice. in then his show in Brussels but yeah it was it was crazy I think I don't know I, I don't know it's, it's from experience with me but like uh you know that's the whole that's the charm about busking is that you're out and about and you never know who's gonna walk past and i'm not talking about just celebrities like obviously yes yeah, sil is a great example but it, you kind of have to 
be willing to perform to anyone, you know? Yeah. And um, so I think when that moment happened, it was, I can't, to be honest, it was, it was a bit like, oh, okay, cool. Like, just keep chill because you've been here for hours, singing for hours. So this is not, that's how I calm myself down. This is, you've been doing this. This, is, this is, isn't different from any other day, even though it right. was, but that's how I kept <laughs> calm anyway. So yeah. <laughs> And, and do you feel like there is a stigma in the industry around busking or what what do you think what do you think about busking as as a, a way to make opportunities for yourself I think it's great and but a lot of people don't like including my mum when I when I first ever bust I, I busked I was like a lot younger mum was like don't ever do that again. <laughs> do that again and I think it's just a case of that you know it, it does look like you're begging you know and yeah. And it's, it's a shame because, yes, yeah, some people can say, oh, you're begging, but you are offering something. You're offering free entertainment, you know. So Absolutely. taking donations, there's nothing wrong with it. If you see all these companies now, when you buy something, they ask, well, do you want to give a donation? Even when you buy something from a company, you don't really need that. So that's just the art of selling is that they make mm -hmm. you feel like you should, but you should be paying for this. And for me, I think it's the exact same thing. And I think, you know, the industry is changing so much. There's a lot less money, especially this year you know, mm. in it and you kind of have to be versatile and innovative in getting your music out there, getting people to connect with you, to genuinely, genuinely connect with you. And I think busking is a great way of doing that. I think when you just overlook that, of course you get people kind of looking at you. Sometimes people look at the money that I have in my fingers, like, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna eat well tonight. I was just like, okay, <laughs> great, you know? And of course I could sit down. There's some days where I'm like, oh my God, like I can't, I can't deal with this. Or, you know, people just yeah. saying really ignorant things to you, but, that's just life in general. Like, you know, there's there's different reasons why people say, there's a lot of different reasons why people say ignorant things to me that I could name. So if, yeah. if Bus can be one of them, you know, you kind of got to push through. So, but yeah, yeah. when I talk about to a lot of other musicians, they're just a bit like, no. You know, they'll sit down, moan to me. Even I had one singer, she would say, oh, what else do you think I should do? Like, I feel I should do different things. And I was like, oh, why don't you try busking? She was just like, oh, no. You know, and it wasn't like, oh, you know what, I'm too scared or, you know, what, I don't think I'm ready for that. It's more like, oh, no, no, I can't. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. but I get that, you know, um, in terms of like some people, you know, even in terms of booking you, they think, oh, that you're just there and you're just happy to perform anywhere. And then when you're like, no, this, this is my prize. It's like yeah. when you go to see a street vendor or street food now, it's so trendy now, yes. you know, but it doesn't mean you're the person selling hot dogs like on them little illegal things it just right. means that it's a different way it's a different way of making your product accessible so yeah <laughs> i like i like that i like that concept and how do you how do you make your money where do you where do you get your money from especially mm. nowadays <laughs> So nowadays, yeah, <laughs> I don't even know where I get my money from now. <laughs> <Not joking. laughs> well, now it's like, again, it's, it's a time where you have to be, um, you have to think on your toes. Like this is a hard time for creatives, but one of the first things I say to, you know, all my friends that I talk to that are just like, you know, I just feel stuck. I always like it, anyone who's wanted to be a creative, they've kind of accepted that it's going to be hard at times. Yes, I'm not yeah. saying that you we were expecting a pandemic and, you know, no yeah. one's expecting that. But, you know, yeah. everyone's getting angry that they're being told to retrain and stuff like that. For me, of course, it's insensitive, but I'm not surprised. <laughs> like, of course, they're going to we're going to be the first ones that they're going to tell to um, to retrain. So in terms of now, yes, of course, like not as much money is coming in, but it's like, for me, I'm just calling this like the growing pain, you know, it's, it's changing now and it's changed mm. way quicker, maybe quicker than I thought it would. So yeah, I had to learn new things, but it's, it's still going towards my business to be able to make it transform into the, the next stages we're going into um, yeah. for, for creatives and yeah, just for the economy really. And, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, before, so when I first started busking, it was mainly busking. So obviously I was working like in a supermarket and I was just kind of doing that and then doing like a few little gigs on the side. And it's then when I started busking, it just completely like just switched over where it was to be, to be brutally honest, like it was like I, what I was making a day at the supermarket was what I was making an hour busking. Right. And I'm not saying that everyone's going to make this busking. That's why people always ask me, even though I don't yeah. say how much I actually make, you know, yeah. you can ask one chicken shop and another chicken shop how much they make in a day. Yeah. It's going to be very different and yeah. they're selling the same product. So it's different things of location, where you are, what you're singing. So 
Um, but yeah, uh, but for me, busking was, it just allowed me to make a lot more money, allowed me to put more money into my music. That's when I was, then I, then I fundraised uh, to be able to fund my first release. And then afterwards, when I got more of a name for myself, got used to being out there, um, mm -hmm. performing, uh, which was about back then, it was about three times a week busking. Yeah. Because more people saw me then, like all of my biggest clients now that were that well before COVID, like yeah. they found me through Buskin, and yeah. it was and they just didn't question anything because I always see it as like you're like an active billboard. Like people hear how you sound, they don't yes. have to go online or look at some fancy video. Of course, those things help in terms of the broader market, but they hear you and they're like, oh, I remember this. I like it. They know what they're paying for, and for me, especially being an acoustic act where. I play the music myself and I play the guitar, even though not everyone wants an acoustic act. It's financially, it's better for me because they're like, oh, I don't have to pay for a band. I can just have you. <laughs> right. So it's, it's uh, so it was great for me in that way. And then like building up my clients and then like a few years on, like like for the past, like two years, my, a lot of my in income came from repeat clients, <laughs> to be honest. Like they just, yeah. they think about another event. They say, oh, you're going to be perfect for it. And um so yeah, that's um, how it was really. So yeah, so first it was like mainly busking and then it was more clients. Yeah. And uh, now it's um, <laughs> it's uh, more online. Obviously it's not the same amount. It's a small amount now because a lot of people are asking for donations. A lot of donations are being given. So I just see this as like, I'm in a bit of a, yeah, the growing pain, the research period of like, you yeah. know, how I'm gonna make my music more accessible, but still make it as personal as busking. So sorry, yes. that's my short answer. Yes. <laughs> and and you like, you talk about vulnerability a lot. And I think this mm. is this is a key to your music, right? It's like, I think that's what happened to me when I first heard you, right? I felt vulnerable in the moment that I heard you sing. And oh, tell me what great. this means to you, because you, you talk about this a lot. Yeah, I think for me, it's like, it's kind of just truly seeing yourself. And it's all the bad stuff and all the good stuff. And it's actually not being too attached to it. Because I always say like, you know, some people get upset because I call them a bit of a snowflake. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, emotions are a great thing. Like they can, they can, they can be negative, but they're still, they're still like a great part of being human. And I think now everyone's like self-diagnosing themselves where they're saying, oh, <laughs> I I went through this in my past and of course you have to do that sometimes you go through things in your past life and it's good to to look back on it but you've got to like love yourself while doing that so even when you make mistakes even when you make the same mistakes again and, and i'm like why am i still here it's like you've got to you've got to accept yourself in that situation it's like i always think the way we talk to ourselves in our head would you talk to your best friend like that or your or, or your or relative like that you wouldn't Absolutely. so so yeah that to me is vulnerability where it's like it's all right to be emotional, but it's it's not to just not be so hard on yourself, you know, not to be so so stuck in in how you feel, you know. It's, it is just a feeling, and sometimes you have to you just have to accept it. And you're like, why did I do that? But maybe tomorrow I'll do the same thing, or maybe tomorrow I'll change. But that's yeah. just life. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so how it is to me. On that note, and on that note about vulnerability, I would like mm. to invite you to share a song with the people <laughs> who are listening. <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, I am going to give you full stage. So this is a busking cool. moment for everyone watching. <laughs> <laughs> Take it uh, away. Uh, since, yeah, since we're on the topic um, of vulnerability, I think it was this song that made me... Um, be able to, um, you know, just realize those things that I just talked about in terms of, yeah, just kind of get out of your rut. Like, yeah, life is hard, but you know, there's a lot of things to be grateful for and there's a lot of things to look forward to. So this song is called Lonely in a Crowded Room. I actually wrote it at a time where I was, uh, I was actually at my mom's house and everyone was in a great mood except me. And I was just like, well, what's going on here? I just need to get over myself really because there's loads of things that I've achieved this year. That I'm happy about and there's lots of things I haven't and that's okay so yeah no 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 
Sometimes I feel this life is never enough So much love around me but I'm stuck in a rut No fame, no fortune, just a house in my name Guess I never liked that bitter taste of champagne Does it get easier? Am I just getting greedier? Damn it's so hard needing something money can't buy No, 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 I know I've only got myself to blame Lonely in a crowded room I'm sick of wasting my time Forgetting what life has done for me Done for me What it already did, yeah Maybe I'll soon realize When it's been taken away from me Lonely in a crowded room No, 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 no Na, 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 na Some call it hunger, some say I'm out of touch Cause I counted all my blessings but it's never enough, no I've been competing, comparing, oh just to feel complete Knowing it's a waste of time Does it get easier? Should I be blaming the media? Painting pictures, posting stories, feeding a lie No, no, no Got myself to blame Lonely in a crowded room I'm sick of wasting my time Forgetting what life has done for me Done for me What it already did, yeah Maybe I'll soon realize When it's been taken away from me Lonely in a crowded room Oh my god, that was awesome. That was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so oh, thank much you. for sharing that song with us. Thank so you. So we have a few comments. So Amy says, yes, it's such a good reminder, asking yourself if you would talk to a friend that way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is about Thanks, vulnerability. Amy. Yeah, yeah and definitely. She, <laughs> she oh, also loved you. the song. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate so Sharika, how can how can people find you? What's the best place for people to find you and follow your work? Because I would love um, to support you as well. Oh, appreciate that. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Sharika Sharad. So that's S H E R I K A S H E R A R D. And uh, yeah, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. Uh, I just joined Twitch. Wow, <laughs> it's very new to me. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I feel like it's all gamers on there, but apparently that's one of the next things that people are jumping onto. So I've just started to check that out. But yeah, like I've got a website as well. So yeah, all my stuff's on Spotify as well. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to share all the links um, in the in the feed later on so everyone can have it. And I'll make sure that they all, they all check in with you and give you some support. So thanks yeah. very much. Just want to give you a big round of applause. Oh, thank and you so thanks, much for having me. Thanks for Appreciate keeping it. on and thanks for, for continuing your journey to be an amazing ah, creator. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. See ya.